2019 marks a bit of a milestone in the industrial history of the city of Rochester. 200 years ago in 1819, the very first mill began operation not too far from here along the banks of Paint Creek. As to where exactly that was, well that's a good question and one we'll explore today. This is the story of some of the early mills in the history of Rochester. I'm Jason in Michigan. This is your story. I thought it'd be fun to try something a little bit different for this episode. To explore the first century of the industrial history of Rochester, why don't we see if we can find the exact locations of some of these mills and see if anything still exists of them to this day. The first information source for our journey is the history of Oakland County with illustrations from 1877. This book, which played a role in the episode on the Barnes Paper Mill Fire, contains a fairly exhaustive list of all the early mills. While it sometimes contains information about the location of the mill, it generally does not provide any sort of physical description. That being said, let us take a look at what it has to say about the first mill. Quote, the first manufacturing done in what was afterwards the village of Rochester was the work of a sawmill erected in the summer of 1819 on the southeast quarter of Section 10 by William Russell, Benjamin Woodworth, John Hershey, and Alexander Graham, the first sawing being done in October of that year. End quote. This entry provides a clue to its location. The mention of the southeast quarter of Section 10 is a reference to a grid system that was used when the United States government sold the land of the Northwest Territory to settlers. When the U.S. acquired the Great Lakes region, it was a northwest corner of the country and was given the name the Northwest Territory. Today, the southeast corner of Section 10 in what was Avon Township would be the northwest corner of the intersection between Main Street and University Drive in downtown Rochester. It would encompass the area around Paint Creek as it runs through the municipal park in downtown. In 1825 and 1826, two maps of Michigan were made by rival map makers in order to profit off the settlers moving to the Michigan Territory. The 1825 map was by Orange Risden and the 1826 by John Farmer. Both show the location of Russell's Mill right where we expect it should be except that it is on opposite sides of the river. Which one is correct? Well, there appears to be a bit of a story in regards to these two maps, but supposedly the Farmer map contains update information in regards to the Risden map. What I can say about these maps is that the Farmer map has Colonel Mack's flour mill, which we know as the Barnes Paper Mill, in the correct spot relative to Paint Creek, so perhaps that is the correct one. By the time the Oakland County history text was written, the exact location of Russell's mill was probably already lost, but some evidence of it still remained in 1877. Quote, this mill, Hershey's, was on or near the present site of the Eureka Mills on Paint Creek, and vestiges of the old dam are still traceable along the banks of the stream at that point. The mill served its purpose and fell into decay and was torn down to make room for other improvements. End quote. The mill's dam would have been upstream of the mill's actual location, so if we knew where that was, we'd be able to put an upper limit on the location of the mill. What we do know is where the Eureka Mills were thanks to a detailed map from the 1872 Oakland County Atlas. With a little bit of map alignment, we can get a general idea where that mill stood. The copy of the 1872 map from which it happened to work is a photograph it took of the book page. Between the distortion caused by an open book page and the fact that the copy of the book was in poor shape to begin with, this limits our options for this particular map, but we have other choices. This is a copy of an 1896 plat map of Rochester, Michigan. This map not only shows some of the existing structures, but it also shows some possible future expansions to the city. Instead of the Eureka Mills, the 1896 map has the roller mills, but the location is still the same. Back at the start of the video, I talked about the sections used for surveying this area of Michigan. The 1896 map has several of these section boundary points marked, and today, the GPS coordinates of each of these points is known. Given their historical importance for land sales, the assumption is that they are the most reliable points on the map. I had my brother help me with this step, and he was able to overlay the 1896 map on top of a modern-day aerial image of Rochester. Now, a map from 1896 is not the perfect scale, but it can give us a close idea as to the location of historical buildings. The roller mills, and thus the Eureka Mills, were likely a little north of where Paint Creek passes under Main Street today. It is quite possible that Lipumas Coney Island is built on top of the old mill. As for Russell's original mill, we can tell from the map that Paint Creek is not in the same spot today as it was in the past. Perhaps the ruins of that mill, if anything is left, is buried somewhere in the city park. For most of the other early industrial sites here in the city of Rochester, the story is basically the same. 
a historical account such as the 1877 history of Oakland County it will kind of give us a vague idea as to where the mill was but its exact location has been lost to time. John Farmer produced another Michigan map in 1837, but it is no more detailed than the 1826 one. A plat map from 1857, while interesting as a historical piece, does not contain the location of any structure. It is not until 1872 that we start seeing detailed locations of structures, and it is with one of these lost structures we can still find a piece of history hiding in plain sight. During my research, I came across an article about the mills of Rochester written by Deborah Larson. She is the author of the Remembering Rochester blog, the research chairperson of the Rochester Avon Historical Society, and is one of the experts in the history of this area. At the end of the article, she leaves a clue about the Wilcox paper mill that burned down in 1901. The article reads, quote, Much smaller than the Barnes paper mill, the Wilcox mill was not very successful. Fire destroyed it in 1901, but the remnants of its mill race can still be seen near the community house in the Rochester Municipal Park. End quote. A mill race was part of a waterway, or in some cases an artificial channel, which fed water to power the mill. It does not appear that any photos of the paper mill still exist, but the Rochester era newspaper provides a description of the structure. Quote, the main building, which with the exception of a stone basement, will be of brick 32 by 48 and two stories high. The machine room will be 24 by 80, bleaching room 20 by 24, and engine room 12 by 24. The location of this mill is one of the finest in the country, while the water power, being 17 feet fall, cannot well be surpassed. End quote. This description comes from the September 3, 1909 issue, in a section which contains reprints of articles from September 4, 1874. Records state that the mill operated under several owners from the late 1870s until 1901, when it was destroyed by a fire. After some more digging through the archives of the Rochester era, I found the article from Friday, June 28th, which describes the fire. It reads, quote, About 5 o'clock Tuesday morning, an alarm of fire was given, and it was soon seen that the old Wilcox paper mill was on fire. As the water mains did not extend that far, there was nothing to do for the crowd but to stand and watch the old mill burn. End quote. Where exactly can we find these ruins? Well, let us go back to the 1896 map of Rochester. The Wilcox paper mill and its mill race can be found in the northwest corner of the map in the area that is today the city park. This place is the mill race running straight through where the Rochester Community House stands today. Since Deborah Larson's research also places the remains of the mill race near the community house, it looks like we are on the right track. Let's go on a search for the old mill race. Before I had an 1896 map overlaid on top of a current map, my first thought was to look around the banks of the current position of Paint Creek. However, the map shows the mill race is further south and much closer to the Rochester Community House. Based on the description of the mill I read earlier, it stated the water fell about 17 feet as it powered the mill. Most of the park sits at a lower elevation compared to the Community House and parking lot. Conveniently, this hill looks about 17 feet tall. I bet what we are looking for is up there. I'm not exactly sure what I'm looking for, but over there is a small stone or cement footbridge. It looks old, so it's worth checking out. I can't tell if this little footbridge was part of the old mill race, but the terrain around here is what really looks interesting. This structure was built to span a small trench. It starts off that way in the direction of the apartments, heads straight for the community house, and it closely follows the mill race in the 1896 map. Given all that, I would say we found our mill race. By finding this piece of history, our journey to explore the old mills of Rochester has come to an end. As usual, you can find all my sources for this video in the description below, and feel free to add any comments you might have. When I return this series, I'll be diving into the history of the Western Knitting Mills, as well as the Woolen Mills which preceded it. Once again, I'm Jason, and Michigan, this has been your story. Thanks for watching.